Okay, I'm going to actually go over the uh, valve train geometry on trying to get the correct length push rod. Comp Cams has uh, different kinds of push rod checker tools. Uh, they come in and out, and they kind of, some of them have a little nut on them. And you uh, can increase or decrease the amount and length of this push rod, and it'll give you uh, the readings that you're looking for trying to find your push rod length that's going to be for whatever your your build is. Um, this 421 stroker here uh, it's got a solid roller cam so it has solid roller lifters inside. Uh, if you were going to do a hydraulic flat tappet um, even a solid flat tappet uh, you would need to use the correct lifter. Uh, the first thing is this this is a solid flat tappet lifter has a little um, C clip inside keeps this in so when you push with the plunger it doesn't move in and out. You would need to buy at least one of these to check the geometry, if not two of them, uh, because if you try to use the uh, solid or not, if you use a solid flat tappet lifter that'll give you a more accurate reading because it's not going to move, it's not going to push the plunger in and out. On a uh, hydraulic flat tap, it, it'll, it'll move and I, I have one sitting here I'll just show you. Okay so this this is like a hydraulic flat tap it lifter, it's just a new one. I can literally take and press this plunger and move this in and out. Uh, that's why you don't want to use your lifters that you're going to run with your cam uh, for a small block Chevy. You'll need to go with the the solid uh, so you have no movement. Uh, so again, uh, this one here is a solid roller and so I've got my push rod length checker tool. This one here is uh, starts at 7.8 uh, and every time you, there's a, there's a dotted line that's on here. I don't know if you'd be able to see, but there's a little dotted line on the tool. And every time you turn the line to line out, that's 50 thousandths. So that makes it 7.850. And then you go out another turn, and that makes it 7.9. That's where I'm going to determine I think that I'm going to be anyway. Uh, so the first thing then is you've got the lifter in there. I'm just going to kind of work it in between the guide plate, uh, put it down into the cup, and then some people use a permanent marker, but here on the valve, the end of the valve, is you need to put some kind of material. What I like is just like a, a dry erase marker. Um, I always go horizontal, and you just put some black marking right on the, the valve tip of the valve stem, <clears throat> and then you're going to get your uh, these are my Harlan Sharp Rockers I'm going to be uh, putting onto this build. And you just put the roller rocker on. If you were trying to do this with a stock GM, you couldn't use a stamped steel rocker because there's no rollerized bearing. Or If you have a roller tip rocker, you can use it. But the problem with the stamped steel is that it just rubs back and forth and it doesn't have like a contact point. It covers like more of the whole thing, and we're talking about high performance, so uh, that would be a totally different type of video. Um, this one here, uh, we're going to just continue with. I've got my push rod length checker tool out to 7.9. I marked that on my uh, roller tip here with the marker. Uh, marked the valve stem with the uh, dry erase marker. Uh, you could use a permanent marker if that's all you have, it'll work. Now I'm going to put the poly lock on. This is going to have a stud girdle, so it's got a long stud girdle poly lock. Um, just tighten that down and until it snugs. Uh, biggest thing is make sure that your lifter in the valley is uh, all the way seated. I'm using number one. It's, there, it's closed uh, for the intake here. Um, just snug it up by hand until it stops and you have no play in there so it keeps contact with the valve stem. And then I'm going to take my 
ratchet and you can get a tool uh, just like this it just you know goes right over the keyway and you can turn it over and as you turn it over then um, it'll move the cam travel for the lifter up and down and give you the marking that you're looking for uh, so that you can determine if you're centered up on the valve stem. So now it's finally coming up. And now we're going back down. I always make sure that stays tight. Um, I always like to do it twice. I'm just going to turn it over again one more time. Okay, so now that that's fully seated, I can take the poly lock nut off. And once I take the lifter off, I'll have a, like a witness mark. And uh, from where the camera view is right now, I know that you won't be able to see this. So I'm going to pause it and then kind of zoom in and then we can look at that. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at uh, where we are with our final result. So on this exhaust for number one and this intake, uh, you can see where the witness mark is. There's right in the center. And then this one here I actually did earlier uh, with an 8 inch length. And you can see where it's removed the material more closer down uh, towards the bottom. And that means it's too long. You would shorten it up to come up closer towards the intake, which I did here with this 7.9. Now there are increments of 50 thousandths, so you can have 7.950, 7 or 7.850, uh, uh, but I did this with a couple different measurements already and 7.9 worked out for me. But you're going to look for the witness mark and you just try to center it up. Uh, this is like, needs to be an offset rocker. so. I used actually a straight exhaust rocker, so the witness mark is a little bit crooked, but um, I already checked it prior. And 7.9 is the length I have here. That works for me. And uh, this is pretty much the best, uh, easiest way uh, to get your push rod length chosen uh, using the roller rocker and the um, comp cams checker tool. Uh, hopefully this will help you to determine that and make sense. Uh, leave any kind of questions or comments. Um, 